Later that year, Dr. King brought his anti-war message to the Mike Douglas Show, where he defended his views against some surprisingly tough questions from the affable host. And an equally unlikely adversary, singer Tony Martin. Here is Dr. King in his historic appearance, which seems remarkably relevant after 40 years. Tony, our next guest is the, is the winner of the Nobel Prize for Peace and perhaps the foremost spokesman for uh, the nine nonviolent faction uh, in the American Negro Civil Rights Movement. Now, his recent speeches and sermons urging Negroes not to fight in Vietnam have initiated a verbal argument among prominent Negroes that threatens to split the civil rights movement wide open. Would you please welcome a very outstanding and controversial gentleman, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. <laughs> I said to Dr. King, I want to put you right in the middle. I wasn't thinking. You've been put in the middle quite, quite <laughs> often, right. haven't you? That's very right. Dr. King, uh, why did you decide to urge Negroes not to fight in Vietnam? Well, I think my view has uh, been a little distorted at that point. I haven't only urged Negroes not to fight. Uh, I feel that the war is so unjust, so abominable, so futile and bloody and costly that no, nobody should be fighting there. I haven't limited my concern to just the American Negro, although I know we are dying in disproportionate numbers there, and uh, we are on the losing end both there and at home, because as long as the war in Vietnam continues, our social programs will inevitably suffer here at home. Well, don't you think that your remarks have created doubts about the Negro's loyalty to his country? Well, some people may feel that. I don't think our loyalty to the country should be measured by our ability to kill. I think our loyalty to the country should be measured by our ability to lead the nation to higher heights of democracy and to the great dream of justice and humanity. Do you, do you honestly feel, uh, Dr. King, that the war in Vietnam could be stopped now without harm to this country? Well, there are two ways to deal with it. Uh, one is a unilateral withdrawal. Uh, I don't oppose that because uh, I feel that this is a possibility. After all, France withdrew unilaterally from Algeria, it withdrew without a military victory. Mm -hmm. And this did not lessen France's prestige or influence in the world. If anything, it increased its prestige but in the world. France is not the power that this country is. Well, I think that's an even greater reason why uh, we should restrain our power. Uh, there's always the danger that any nation will abuse its power. And uh, I think our power must be much more than military power. We don't need to prove to the world or anybody our military power. I think we've got to prove our moral power. Do now. you feel that this nation has abused, uh, as you say, uh, their power? Oh, I certainly do in the, in the war in Vietnam. I have no doubt about that. I'm not saying that it was done uh, with evil motives in mind. I think we made a huge miscalculation. And when you make a mistake, you ought to confess it. One of the great things about President Kennedy was that he said to the world, to his closest advisors, that he made a mistake in the Bay of Pigs oh, invasion yes. in Cuba. And he said, I never should have listened to the experts. And I think the time has come now for our leaders to say that we've made a grave mistake in Vietnam and we ought to take the initiative in bringing an end to this conflict, if not through a unilateral withdrawal, at least through a negotiated settlement. And I think there are things that we can do to create the atmosphere for negotiation. You know, uh, Dr. King, my first question, when you said uh, uh, it was, uh, you didn't say it was inaccurate, but you said it was a misunderstanding that you didn't advise just Negroes not to fight in Vietnam. But I think it was interpreted that way. Now, uh, how about the heroic uh, Negroes already in Vietnam? Uh, don't your remarks belittle their accomplishments? Oh, not at all. Uh, I have nothing but admiration for the bravery of those uh, who are engaged in the kind of sacrificial and suffering situation uh, that they are in. I'm not dealing with uh, their particular 
situation in terms of fighting. I'm trying to do something, uh, trying to lead us somewhere that will bring an end to what I see as a terrible and a very tragic war, which is damaging the image of our nation here and abroad. Doctor, may I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, don't you feel that perhaps the parents of, of the boys who are now currently in the operation in Vietnam might uh, not be in uh, amity with your civil rights movement now because of your... I doubt that. Things. I doubt that very seriously. Uh, I can't uh, overestimate the amount of discontent in the Negro community over the war in Vietnam. Uh, I haven't seen any loss of support in the Negro community. As I don't mean just in the Negro community. I mean, there are many, many of the Caucasians who are with mm -hmm. your civil rights movement as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you're not disingratiating yourself, how you feel about those who have their sons in Vietnam now. Well, there again, I think two things are important here. Uh, first, I think that uh, the things that I'm saying and the things that I'm trying to do and all of the people in the move peace movement are trying to do are really geared toward uh, bringing the boys back home. In other words, we are trying to prove to be their best friends by uh, uh, doing something to bring about the climate that will bring an end to this war. Uh, secondly, anyone who is committed to civil rights would not withdraw that commitment as a result of uh, someone in the civil rights movement taking a stand against the war in Vietnam. And if they do, then they were not with it in the beginning. You stand up for what is just because it is just and right. Uh, I think it was T.S. Eliot who said, there's no greater heresy than to do the right thing for the wrong reason. That's right. And a lot of people do the right thing for the wrong reason. And I submit that anyone who would stop supporting civil rights because of a stand against the war on the part of some leaders ended up doing the right thing for the wrong reason. They were never truly committed to civil rights in the beginning. Dr. 